It's a beach. It's a beach. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. The waves are crashing against the sand. Mm-hmm. It's calm. It's quiet. No one else is there. Describe more of this beach. Look around. The water is uh, light blue, mm-hmm. almost clear. It's washing up against uh, yellow sand. The waves, you can see the white water of the waves. Mm-hmm. As they come gently crashing in against the shore. Do you feel that you have a body there? No. Mm -hmm. So without a body, you'll be able to go anywhere. So I'd like for you to look around behind the beach, behind you, and see what's around you. There's land. Mm -hmm. Open, I can't see any buildings. Mm-hmm. Describe the land for me. Behind the shore, it's uh, green. Green hills. Mm-hmm. How tall are these hills? Not very. Mm-hmm. Somewhat. And they stretch on for about as far as I can see. Mm-hmm. Is there anything about this scene? that seems interesting to you? Anything that you observe that's interesting? No, it's, it seems mostly just peaceful and serene. Mm-hmm. Calming. So what, what draws your attention more, the sea or the land? The sea and the, the waves. Sea. All right. So I'd like for you now to allow yourself to go towards that sea. Allow yourself to drift and float towards that sea. Okay. And tell me what you see on your journey. More waves. Mm -hmm. See if there's anything out there in the sea that perhaps is waiting for you. all around. Nothing's coming into focus Mm -hmm. just yet. Very good. So let's find out what there is beneath the sea. Like for you to see yourself now going under the sea. And you'll be able to breathe and swim very easily. And let's find out What's in the sea? Tell me everything that you encounter under the sea. I can see fish. Mm-hmm. Some of the colors more like tiger striped. Mm-hmm. How big are these fish? Uh, relatively small, small, much smaller than me. Mm-hmm. So let's keep going and tell me what you see. Coral. Mm-hmm. Is it daytime or nighttime under the sea? Daytime. Mm-hmm. What else do you see? Not, not much else. Mm-hmm. It's mostly that the water's warm and mm-hmm. it's calming. What does it feel like to be swimming under that sea? peaceful. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit lonely. Mm-hmm. Let's find out why it feels lonely to you. Let's take you back in time and let's find out why you're there by yourself. Be there now. What's happening? I wanted to observe it. Mm-hmm. It's a place where I get a lot of peace. 
But when I go there, I'm only by myself. Mm-hmm. So how does that make you feel? It's nice for a moment or two, but after a while, I want to leave. Mm-hmm. So let's find out where you go to after you leave this beautiful place. Allow yourself to drift and flow through time and space. Let's see where you usually hang out. Allow the images to come. What do you imagine? I'm having a hard time bringing it into focus Mm -hmm. right now. It doesn't have to be into focus. If it's not into focus, we're going to use all of the other senses. Sure. The senses that you use when you just know. It's, what do you know this place to be? There's someone I talk to. I, I make decisions there. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a place where I can pick other places. Mm-hmm. But that's all I'm getting right now. Mm-hmm. So let's find out who else is there with you. I want you to tell me what this other person feels like to you. They feel older or younger? Or equal? Possibly older. Mm-hmm. It's not very clear right now. It's okay. And if you can describe what this place feels like, Would it be indoors or outdoors? Mm, More more indoors. Indoors, very good. Sure. And if you were to perhaps tell me if it's what the structure would be like, what would you imagine the structure would be like? Um, Almost like a rectangular cube Mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. Does this cube have any color to it? I'm getting a, almost like a tan sort of haze mm-hmm. to it. And would this place have any furniture in it? None that I can see. None. Mm-hmm. So what do you imagine that this place is for? What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Deciding where to go. Deciding where to go. Very good. So is it just one person that helps you decide? I'm only reading one energy right now. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So let's now go to the moment where you decide where to go. And I want you to use that part of your knowing that just tells you where you're going to next. I'm coming here. Very good. Very good. So let's find out what happens once you decide. What's the next thing? It happens. I can see Earth from space. Mm -hmm. Tell me what it looks like. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can see the clouds uh, over over the oceans. Mm -hmm. Some land. It's beautiful. It's clear. Mm -hmm. So, what part of the Earth are you going to? What do you imagine? It's also not coming Mm -hmm. yet into focus. It doesn't have to be. Sure. Right now I can just see the planet Mm -hmm. and the clouds. And I'm taking it all in. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why you're coming to the planet? What's in your gut that tells you? I want to help. For what purpose do you need to help the planet? Light. Mm-hmm. Do you and bring light? I feel like yes. Mm-hmm. It needs to be brighter. It needs to be brighter. So, if you were to imagine what your body looked like as you were observing Earth, what would it be like? 
I'm experiencing it is this body. Mm-hmm. Very good. So let's find out what else this body has that will help Earth with. I want you to use your knowing. What is it that this body does to help Earth? It carries light. Mm-hmm. Very good. And how should this body be used to carry this light? Interact with as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. Be, share, love. So did Ray have any type of agreement before he came here? He signed up to do this because he knew it would be hard. Mm-hmm. But it was important. Can you tell me a little bit about what his mission is here? At this time. So many are lost. Mm-hmm. When a good example someone bring love and more energy. Mm-hmm. Has he been on Earth before to do this? Not with this exact purpose. Mm-hmm. Why has he been here before? Other experiences is tied to Earth. Mm-hmm. much of its history. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about his history? I know that he likes to go under the water. Yes. Uh What is the purpose of him going under the water? He says that it's a good place for him to be, but he doesn't want to be there a long time. Why that? He was the alone, Mm -hmm. being lonely. Mm -hmm. That was it. He's meant to interact more with other consciousnesses, Mm -hmm. but does enjoy moments of solitude. Mm -hmm. Is the water a place where it's natural for him to go if he needs solitude? For calm, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you often take him to the water? Whenever I can. Mm -hmm. Should he make more of a attempt to be near the water? The water is always good for him. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now he wants to know if he is on the right path. Now you said he came here to help others. What is his exact purpose? To share the light. Mm -hmm. In a way he already knows this. Does he do this with his students? Yes. Mm-hmm. Who else does he do it with? His family, mm-hmm. his friends, even people that he interacts with. They see it. How do they feel when he shares the light with them? Many don't know exactly what it is, but It does help. Mm -hmm. What can he do in his career, for example, to help with this purpose? Relax more. Mm. Be allow it to flow. Is he not relaxed enough now? No. No. Can you explain to him what he needs to do exactly? Find moments of calm. Be around water. This will help ground him. Mm -hmm. Moments of calm and peace. So much work he does comes from effort and would be done much better if it was done from a place of calm. Mm. So he asks, what can he do to be a more effective teacher? 
be genuine. It's all provided. Let it flow. We were talking before that when he teaches, the higher self comes through. It does. How can he use this gift of channeling the higher self as a teacher even more, more effectively? The more he relaxes and sets his intentions, the more it'll flow and it can flow for the purpose he sets forth. Mm -hmm. Is he in the right place where he works? Yes, mm -hmm. for now. Anything else that he should consider in terms of a career path? Where he finds joy and calm. Mm -hmm. These are important things for him. Very good. Now he asks about the purpose or theme that he came to explore in this life. Yes. Is there? Is there one? Or did he just come to help? He's... He's come to rediscover the connection to source in previous incarnations that was not available. Hmm, why is that? It wasn't important to him then. Okay. It wasn't needed. Mm -hmm. Now it is. Mm -hmm. What is his role in this? Mm, sometimes he's too concerned about specific way things need to be. Mm -hmm. It's more the sharing and the interaction, the not being alone and in solitude, mm -hmm. the need to be around people, calm and sharing. Now, a lot of folks come from the light, like he did, to share the light, but they don't like being around people. He doesn't much either. Uh -huh. He puts on a good front, mm -hmm. but that's why we showed the beach. Mm -hmm. And he does enjoy his solitude, but and he does experience some anxiety around people. But he can persist, and he can mm -hmm. interact, and these interactions are important. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is it doing to other people when he interacts with them? And to him? For others, it shows that another way is possible. That you can thrive without survival mm -hmm. now, more so than ever before. Can you explain that, please? The energy has been for such a long time such that in the, the prevailing wind, so to speak, has been that you need to have dominion, you need to have resources you need to take, you need to extract, you need to be better, you need to be the best, and what you gather is, is what you have, and that's, that's all a distraction. You're naturally present, you're naturally abundant, and the real state is cooperation, not competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in his own small way, there's some of that example, some of that thought shared with others. Well, it kind of reminds me of nature. Nature just is. It kind of cooperates with each other. Yes. And... Uh, it's really not in a mode of survival, it's in a mode of receiving. Nature thrives in that, in that way. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And in many ways, how humans can be, that's an example. Mm -hmm. You can mirror that and find more harmony with the earth. In a way, taking your mind off of survival is the key to survival. Hmm. Just being, allowing, being and allowing? Being, allowing, and cooperating. Mm -hmm. That's a very important part of all of this. So, now that he understands this, what's he missing that can help him the, mass, the best? He's so worried about these little details. Mm -hmm. Not that important. <laughs> when he bees and when he is and when he's in a state very similar to what he's experiencing now, it's, it's all there. Mm -hmm. All of these details will have, have an elegant way of sorting themselves out. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't need to worry about the details? Not nearly as much as he does. Mm -hmm. Now as a teacher, he's trying to give information to his students in a particular way. And you've said before that if he just allows you, the higher self, to channel through, will all of these details fall into place? When he comes from a place of genuine being, and when anyone really comes from a place of genuine expression, in the short term you can't guarantee what the reaction will be or how others perceive you, but in the long term it generally does uh, create a very positive and very lasting impression. Mm -hmm. This impression is important and very significant in terms of human interaction. And so, in interacting with his students, with any teacher interacting with their students, it, it's important to not as much instill barriers, but to, to break them down in ways that show integrity and, and, and genuine care. When this is done, many of the details will sort themselves out. Mm -hmm. What happens when you have individuals that don't go along with, with you? you? You seem to be butting heads or you feel intimidated by them. Can you tell him what to do in that type of situation? Smile. <laughs> it's not you can't, you can't change the mirror's reflection, mm -hmm. but by smiling, you've, you've put the right foot forward. Mm -hmm. and there are different challenges that are there, but what we're searching for now is the reaction and the adaptation. This is a process is been on Earth for a great many events and many times, as, as quite a few have, and it's not all all bridged immediately. Not not all changes are made right away. Mm -hmm. Patience is important, but a, a persistent patience, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so, in carrying through in in this way those that may have opposite intentions of you, they, by smiling, by having integrity, by showing integrity, in many ways they, they won't have the same success they, because they're not coming from the same place of integrity mm -hmm. and, and well-being well or, or caring concern. And so by having the reaction of just a smile by being positive and carrying through on your intentions, that which opposes you will, will, will not develop. It just, it, it's, it wasn't, it wasn't right. It wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. Don't be distracted by it. 
Does the smile diffuse it? In many ways, yes. Mm -hmm. The smile internally helps. It, it, it sets forth positive energy with it within you, within the being. And that's an important, it's an important step. Set yourself up right, if you will. And then secondly, it affects the others where you're perceiving this, this, this different reaction from it. It, it, it shows them that you're, you're unaffected. It shows them that there is positivity and happiness and that may even seem to make a situation worse up at front, but the long-term effects also must be considered. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me that these are like workplace bullies. Mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed throughout my lifetime that the bullies always did the same thing until I changed my reaction to them. Yes. So, what's the besides smiling? Is there some sort of a mental thing or a heart thing that you need to project onto these that bully you? Loving intention, loving intention towards them. Mm -hmm. um, generally, when it comes, it there's some level of resistance or hostility or some some concern that that's held on on that side of the perspective but if you can discipline yourself to be patient and to set forth positive energy and send it in their direction mm -hmm. it may take days weeks months years but over time that will prevail mm -hmm. wonderful good thank you so much sure. now he's he's been awakening little by little yeah. pretty fast actually what can he do to be a more awakened individual? Uh, more time for peace and calm. Mm. He tries to take things on very quickly and generally tries to anticipate how it should look. And these skills were very helpful to him at, at a time, but now they're less so. And in some cases can be a distraction or a hindrance to the progress mm -hmm. that he wishes to make. Does he have any special gifts? His light, it's, it affects people in ways that he, he doesn't know and is generally longer lasting. There are many others that can do this as well and have this. Mm -hmm. And these types of incarnations are happening more frequently, more regularly now. Um, but that is the main purpose here is to share love, light, and compassion. Mm -hmm. The needle must be moved from this survival mentality and human consciousness. And the timing is right to start now. Mm -hmm. Now, as a teacher affecting students who also bring the light. Yes. How can these teachers, there are so many teachers now that are light beings, that they are star seeds, that have all of their students as little lights. Yes. What can they do to encourage these little lights to beam brighter? Many who go into the teaching profession tend to have a set vision for, for everything, a, a set expectation and um, a desire to maintain control. And to an extent, there, there are positive, they have their merits, this, these kinds of intentionalities. However, it is important to think more harmony as the sun has pulls by its its brilliant light and gravitation all of the planets that are around it in the solar system, so could a teacher carry their students through a natural 
effort and harmony as opposed to a set, well, idea of their, the classroom being their dominion and that ideas must be managed in a strict or rigid fashion. There is allowing and teachers can best serve as facilitators. Ray already knows this, but uncovering. A good teacher leads someone to uncover what they already knew was theirs and to remember. Mm -hmm. And the idea of pursuing harmony or as a, as a facilitator, as, as someone who can have the, the catalyst and the director of good and meaningful experiences. These are, these are the base intentions um, that can be much more effective with learners as, as we have them in, in, in classrooms today. It's the intentions that are set that mean the most. Mm -hmm. Specifically, many can find their own ways to, to make that idea work and should strive to, to, to find that. But it's certainly more about facilitating. Mm -hmm. Is there an agreement between students and teachers before these students even come here that they're going to be around someone who will influence them? To an extent, yes. Um, there are, um, and you do have the ability to pick um, to a degree um, in, in contract what, what people you want to have an experience with or to influence you in a certain way. And certain people agree to come in at certain times. It's, it's a, it's a two-way street. Um, on the spiritual level, teachers can agree to have certain students and certain students can agree to have certain teachers. Um, as a, and from the idea of initiating the agreement, so to speak, but it is, it is a valuable part of the process in both ways, both for having, um, challenging students for teachers as well as having challenging teachers for students. Mm -hmm. What would be the benefit of a, of a teacher having a very challenging student? Growth, reflection, and hopefully an awareness of how to best connect. In the role of a teacher caregiver, it's important to know and understand each individual in your charge. It's, it's, it's necessary. And sometimes those challenging students are there to remind you that you have individuals that are, that are coming through and look, look to you as, as a caregiver and in a very important way. And it, it is best to recognize this and and to be there and to be the role model to be the example and yeah perhaps you you may have challenges in the beginning but long term the impact is incredible mm -hmm. very good now he tells me that at night before he goes to sleep he has all of these thoughts coming through his head What's the best way to get to sleep without all of that? Start by breathing. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like when his breathing normally it distracts him when he thinks about his breathing. Mm -hmm. But just breathe. Remember who you are, where you came from, and what you're here to do that no matter what other thoughts come into your mind, that there is a purpose, there is a reason. And as each of us come forth, there's 
an elegant purpose for it. Anything else is a distraction. So the breathing is really what you need to focus on before you go to sleep? That's the best way? That will help. Mm -hmm. That will help. Um, before bed, try reading, reading something of interest. Um, something, something to give the mind something else to consider other than the mundane. It's where the thoughts come from. It's the mundane. He thinks very much of mundane things. And there's, as you stretch a rubber band, so, so does it snap back. These thoughts come from snapping back, if you will, mm -hmm. of, of thinking about how he's a planner. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's better to allow than to plan. And so looking at the overall uh, lifestyle, uh, allowing, allowing allowance, allowing more time to allow will also help with these thoughts at night and being more present in the moment is something that is important. It requires a little bit more discipline for him, but he can get there. Well, he says that he actually gets angry if he wakes up and starts thinking again. Sure. Uh, the anger comes as a short circuit, if you will, mm -hmm. um, through intentionalities and their manifestation. And manifestation has been put as an art of allowance. And that is much more the, the natural state of it, if you will, mm -hmm. that trying to effort something in, it's an old energy. Um, it may have worked for him very well. It worked for him in this life to a, to a point. It may work for many people, but in the energies that are there now, what's, what's available now, that's that's not the way, it's not the best way. Mm -hmm. And so having a little bit more patience and flexibility, that goes a long way. Okay, good, good. Is there somebody in his life that's in his soul group? <laughs> they all are. They all are? Almost, uh, yes. All his family, um, friends? Many of them. He's been around many, many times, and um, now for this incarnation, there's many, many of his close acquaintances have has done this with him many times before. Mm -hmm. How many times has he been here on Earth? Thousands. Thousands. Yeah. So he's not a new soul here. No. Mm -hmm. And does he have any karmic debts that he needs to resolve? He's releasing karma. Okay. He's, he's trying to do it on his own. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is part of efforting, if you will, and the fact that looking at it in so many different ways, if he relaxes and allows, he's, he's working on his forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Everything's taking its course. That's part of this incarnation is the release of all of that old baggage, if you will, from previous incarnations on Earth. What is the best way for someone to release all of this karma. Be at peace, forgive, love. The, these are words that may often come up, and but they, 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 these words manifest themselves so often because they are so important. They're just such basic ideas that with love and forgiveness you can erase all karmic debts mm. it's it's that simple um so the idea being is that if you've created a wrong acknowledge mm. process what you've done and ask for forgiveness ask mm. 
-hmm. ask that person if if that's possible ask ask the universe ask even if it's in the silence of your own heart mm -hmm. but ask and if you ask sincerely and you mean and you you extend love and forgiveness it's important to release those that owe you karmic debts first um, it's it's important to forgive those who have wronged you mm -hmm. um, it, you've been wronged for a reason and as as uncomfortable as it may seem from the perspective of your body that that forgiveness that releasing is, is so important and that is how you overcome in the broader sense we're we're much more than we are today um, in these 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 bodies these incarnations it's many 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 and as you look on the larger scale the ideas of love and forgiveness carry on mm -hmm. Those are the permanence, those are the constants. And by as much as we said about the mirror, that you have to smile first. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, what a great change that kicks forth. And though there might be momentary setbacks or, or challenges or, or, or things, if you take the broader perspective, it will be right and thereby forgiving those that have wronged you in the past first then by asking for forgiveness of the universe and from others it will be given this is the perfect time to begin releasing karmic debts mm -hmm. what do you tell a person that says well i'll forgive but i don't forget <laughs> yes um you're not going to hurt me anymore. Well, yes, and that, so this is this is a complex question to yes. answer. Mm -hmm. um, all boils down to intentionality and what what you actually mean. As you speak, it, it's it's always about what is what is truly intended, yes. and you may be able to uh, with, with another conscious being may be able to fool them or trick them, but you're not tricking the universe. Mm -hmm. And when you say, I don't forget, well, what do you mean mm -hmm. that you don't forget? Um, you, you come forth, and if someone's wronged you, from this side of things, you, you know it was going to happen. And you're, you're trying to, especially here on Earth, you're trying to remember, trying to reconnect back to you've come a long distance now let's reconnect that's that's a major theme right now mm -hmm. and so when you say i won't forget well okay what, what do you mean because you knew you were going from the spiritual side of things you you knew this experience in a way was, was coming now from the physical you don't and that that is its its own process yet if you're saying sometimes in saying that you won't forget is part of still remembering or still holding on to it mm -hmm. and you still carry forth the the energy from that wrongdoing and you still carry forth a sense of of hostility mm -hmm. um, and when that's being done when you say you, you won't forget that 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 isn't a full and complete releasing of that event and it to a degree it will it will still influence you in perhaps ways that aren't desired mm -hmm. what's important when you say you don't forget or you won't forget is that if you mean it in the sense that I've learned a lesson from this I am somehow different I'm more aware of something then in that sense it is it is a positive thing if that, if that makes sense yes that your intentionality and in saying that you won't forget when someone's wrong with you makes all of the difference and that as much of none of us like seeing people go through 
wrong or bad or horrific experiences it's 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 there uh, it's part of what coming to earth is about what what gets sorted out here and as ugly as things are sometimes they're they're part of a longer process if earlier the bicycle was discussed that if you fell off your bike well yeah maybe you skinned your knee however that taught you something about how to get back on that bike mm -hmm. and what to know and how to better adjust and you carry this as a soul mm -hmm. it stays with you and so when you go through those those traumatic and those rough experiences it's it's from the perspective that you have while you're incarnated yes it is it is it, it, it can be horrific but it, it it's something that is part of a broader growth it's it's painful but it is necessary and you can best connect with the light of source when you release the anger or the pain towards the person who's done it because that though perhaps your experience may have been horrible it it on the broader perspective it, it has facilitated it's facilitated soul growth for you mm -hmm. and that's what's important wonderful well he has questions about his future they're talking mm. about having children now. Yes. And he wants to know if this is right. <laughs> it is. Um, so many, so many details, very careful planner, but it will be. Um, this is, this is right. Mm -hmm. So what would he and others who are planning to have children should consider? What should they be aware of before they have children? Be loving. That's it. That that applies to just about any and everything. Mm -hmm. Be loving, but for him personally, he already has the instincts. It's 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 provided. Mm -hmm. um, and for many parents, it's the roles that they will fulfill as parents have largely been agreed to prior to incarnation in, in the macro sense it's it's that um, generally um, things are best served when you act with integrity and love and that those ideas much with a child will, will as with anyone else do continue and do play what should he specifically consider patience he needs more patience will these children that come to him be teaching him patience <laughs> uh, they will accelerate some learning yes why is it that we have some children that are more challenging than others well it would be boring if it was all the same wouldn't it <laughs> yes it would. Um, mm. so but does it match up with the parents needs yes it's from the broader side of things, it's all elegantly woven and orchestrated that something, one event can touch many people and many people can take many different things from the same event, if you will. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, yes, um, a challenging child is there to teach the parent uh, is there to experience the parents reaction to said trials and ultimately to develop what they can in that relationship it's all about growth and the end of the day and growth is accelerated in times of challenges it's a short window from the broader perspective of of cost is the word that comes to mind but it's a, it's a short window of of pain if you will for a long time of gain from the spiritual perspective okay good
Good. He tells me that he has challenges meditating. Yes. Would you explain to him why? It's discipline. It's allowing, allowing. There's, there's room for growth and allowing and for him and for all of us. Um, but allowing is, is such an important part of, and part of this that in meditation, it's, it's both the, it's more effectively said the science of allowing mm -hmm. that what will work best for your body what will allow you to best visualize, which will best allow you to grant permission mm -hmm. for things to occur. Um, in terms of meditating, um, water will help him in meditation, be around water, listen to running water, um, find calm, find peace, um, and work with the ego. These are, these are the remaining things. The, mm -hmm. These are important. Now, he tells me, and I've heard this from others, that, for example, when he does my own guided meditation, this visualization exercise, yes. and he gets to the portal that takes him yes. somewhere, that's it. It's gone. What happens during that time when people click out? Sure. So, to answer your question as, as it was offered, mm -hmm. Those that maybe experience sleep, they're they're called back, um, and energy work is being done on them mm. um, to better focus and prepare um, them. So it, it opens it up to to something to something else. Um, Ray felt that the, for him it was a past life regression. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that's urgent for from his perspective to 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 review mm -hmm. from a previous life in this one mm -hmm. and for others it's it's not always the case that the this for some it is very healing and very important and but for for others it's it's more important to have the 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 calming of the body and the allowance of the energy work to be done. So does his soul actually go somewhere where you're working on him? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he's really not sleeping, per se, is he? I mean, he experiences it as sleep. Okay. Okay, so he's going to a much deeper level. Yes, mm -hmm. and all of the information that, that he receives at this level is, is not for right now, okay. so that's why he can't access it from the now. Okay. What, when can he access this information? Because right now we're talking about the new earth. Sure. We're talking about people now ascending along with Mother Earth, with Gaia. When are we going to be able to access all of this great information that we've been getting when we sleep? Sure. Um, you know, you know what I'm going to say mm -hmm. soon. <laughs> Well, that's why we're here. Yes. We want to find out a little bit about this. <laughs> what sooner or what soon means. Yes. Um, what we will say is this, is that it's a uniquely individual process. And um, that's the amazing thing about how it all works, is that there's such a tapestry and that so many things are simultaneously possible of being mm -hmm. in the exact way. And that... As these new earth energies are coming, it, the the idea of experiencing an event as coming is an event unto itself. And what I mean by that is that it's preparation. And as opposed to investing your energy and concern for a moment that's not the now, be more present in the now. How, how you get there is by embracing where you are right now more fully. And as, as you, as many interject a, a, a time frame, well, I would like this date. Well, 
that detracts from the energy and the momentum that you have in moving towards it. And so it's important to embrace the ideas and to disconnect a specific outcome because when you inject those expectations, it delays the manifestation. Mm -hmm. So the fastest way to get to new earth is to embrace the ideas that are being brought forth now and, um, and to allow that to channel through you. And as the time is right, all of the information that you need will be available to you. Mm -hmm. And it will happen. It will almost seem like it's happening by chance. And you will, and you may not even believe it as it's happening. But when it does, it, it certainly will happen. Mm -hmm. And this is gradual, you say? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not an immediate process. Well, I was talking to Ray about the experience that I had recently where I went out in the middle of the day and there was no traffic whatsoever. Yes. Uh, I had no idea where all the cars went. It felt like it was a holiday. And it was actually the middle of a week during a time when there would be a lot of cars on the road. And for that mm -hmm. moment, I felt, hmm, is this the new earth? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and so this is, this is what I was talking about previously, mm -hmm. right? So how do you get to the new earth? You make new earth, the transition won't seem as sharp in a way. Mm -hmm. You bring new earth here. This earth feels like new earth for you. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a bridge. Yeah. It's a natural progression of things. And so Alba, for you, what that moment was, um, is something to give a lot of appreciation towards because that was a moment for you yes. where you were starting to bridge the gap. And mm -hmm. that's one example you were meant to remember and to acknowledge that as a moment where the gap is being bridged. Yeah. That was very cool. That's yes. why I can't stop talking about no, it. To absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and it's and and by doing so, that serves as an example, as a mm -hmm. connection, as a as a vibrational, if you will, um, template to help other people do the same. Mm -hmm. So each time that you acknowledge a little miracle, for example, yes, I mean I had one last night that I was talking to Ray about, where I basically was in one reality and the next mm -hmm. moment the reality changed mm -hmm. um, once you acknowledge that you realize that's that this is what's happening yes mm -hmm. and um it, it 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 should be a joyous celebration mm -hmm. at every moment because the more when when something like that comes your way by celebrating it you magnify mm -hmm. its energy mm -hmm. Mag thousands of times you increase it and if that's truly what you want by mm -hmm. giving acknowledgement it allows things of a similar vibration to find you more easily more readily mm -hmm. so that really uh, brings forth the the law of attraction almost yes. that once you are on a certain wavelength that you're thinking a certain way and you acknowledge it it brings more towards you Yes, mm -hmm. and um, from the individual perspective, it's it's your way of creating mm -hmm. and and manifesting. And that when you embellish in your joy, that radiates, and that that is a in a very basic way, that is a very positive thing for for the universe, for for everyone, for all of us. Mm -hmm. and when you are as a fiber of creation, experiencing bliss. Every fiber that is is woven with you, it can help but feel some of the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that when you have not just you, but many other people feeling the same way, especially here on Earth, what that does for the energy is incredible. Mm -hmm. And no matter what other things you can see out in the world right now from this perspective, it's so critical that celebrating even... even something as small as, as, as taking a route with no traffic or finding the best parking space or, or something along those lines. Yes. But even the most mundane of celebrations, Alba, when you experience these kinds of things mm -hmm. and when you give energy, when you give thanks to it, it's more powerful. 
than any of the other dark things that you see in in this world now and it's it's wonderful and that's what the spiritual awakening and it's how it's tipping the scale if you will mm -hmm. it's even by the the giving the, the taking pause to give joy to, to to send that out to have hundreds or thousands of people doing that it's mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It, it, it does affect things. Mm -hmm. uh, as I've said before and, and other things that when you set forth um, this, this sort of positive energy, it, it will overwrite. It might seem like things are pushing back in the immediacy of the event, but when you take a larger perspective, it's, it's making tremendous progress. It's, it's, it's very valuable. It's, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So gratitude really is an amazing part of this manifestation process. Yes. Mm -hmm. So getting back to being a teacher and being a parent, how can we reinforce that in our children? I mean, when I was growing up, I had the a very, very positive parents who um, basically celebrated everything that I did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whether it was goofy or not, they, mm -hmm. they enjoyed just me doing whatever. Uh, how can we now teach our children to really uh, experience this bliss of their own manifestation so that they can impact the world? Sure. It is good for younger people to be more aware. Um, at present, there, there are m many fewer those that would be in what would be considered youth ages um, aware of what would be considered spiritual concepts. Mm -hmm. And that is an, an important next step, though they come in with a lot. They're, they're not as always consciously aware of what things that they would do naturally. And if they were more aware of what, what among their natural behaviors were more helpful mm -hmm. and more contributing to the greater good, then that would uh, then that would begin to happen on a more regular basis. And the more that we have out there, the more people that are trying to share this love, um, the more broad changes, the more quickly we'll see broad changes uh, on this earth. So we need all the kids to participate. Yes, um, it, it, is, it is important. And uh, it doesn't seem that right now there's any any effort to teach any of these awarenesses this awareness to, to children mm -hmm. they bring in much more naturally on their own that is that is right but there's still another level and children are most uniquely equipped to receive this information mm -hmm. and and would would believe it and would practice it mm -hmm. in a way that the most experienced and caring adult took years of practice to do, they can do it right away. So should we be teaching our children from infants about spirituality and what they can do? Yes. Unequivocally, yes. It's to have that broader awareness of, of why is peace good, why is love good, that we're all together. It's, it's that moral if you will, belief um, and the practicing of it, a lot of it's happening. So to an extent, things are happening through less direct means now to, to, to nudge this in the right direction. Mm. But more explicit effort can and should be made to further accelerate humanity's path to ascension. Wonderful. So what's going on with his being, his body? Um, can you do a scan and let's see what's going on with his health? His stomach. Mm -hmm. What's going on with his stomach? That's a little uneasy. Mm -hmm. What's causing that? As he said, the foods. Mm -hmm. He knows. 
So what kind of diet are you all going to put them on? Hmm. He, en he enjoys some things that are not ideal for his new energies. Mm -hmm. like, like what? He, he enjoys a drink. He enjoys uh, coffee. And some of these the, these beverages lower vibration, and that's that's not appropriate anymore. Now there are millions of people who have coffee every day. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm allergic to it. I can't have it. But that's for a reason. <laughs> yeah, my body screams at me <laughs> <laughs> when I have coffee, <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. What is coffee doing to people? It's an artificial accelerant to the metabolism, and that's mm -hmm. not ideal. It it can improve focus and energy, but it, it does so in a way that is contrived mm -hmm. and not natural. Okay. And it's the same idea as pharmaceuticals. You're you're pushing a lever, mm -hmm. levers that weren't meant to be pushed. Okay. And so by ingesting coffee, you're contriving. A sense of more energy more alertness mm -hmm. and that with practice and patience you could realize that same net of, of effect without using contrived means in a way that is much more natural and harmonious to your body's chemistry mm -hmm. so what's it doing to his stomach it's changing it's it's more acid it's it's more acidic yes. and bitter and uh, at, at a time it, it, it could have been ignored. However, with the changing energy, yes. it, it needs to be let go in order to keep momentum in, in energetic growth. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that when you stop drinking coffee or any caffeine, it produces changes in your body and not very, not very good one. Can I ask for assistance here so that he can very naturally eliminate the coffee without any of these side effects? Yes. Mm -hmm. We will help. Thank you. So what are the drinks doing for him? Um, the alcohol in, in the same way. He's done research on this too about how it affects vibration. And here's for him. Here's 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 what it is that in social situations he sometimes experiences anxiety or, or difficult. That that's a separate theme that's meant to be explored on its own. Mm. And alcohol is one shortcut to make him more relaxed and more at ease with himself. Um, and pre and it seems. That is one of the prevailing reasons why many enjoy alcoholic beverages um, to become in a less inhibited state. Mm -hmm. It's more important for spiritual growth to put yourself in a less inhibited state naturally. As coffee contrives energy and focus uh, for some, that alcohol contrives a sense of relaxation, mm -hmm. if you will, or a sense of of, of calmness and her ease that's it's contrived yes and it if if you want it to be authentic if you want it to be real and much more easily replicated and you invest the time into into doing the 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 work that you can naturally put yourself in that same less inhibited state so how do you do that you have people, for example, and I'm just going to give an example. Sure. Uh, it's a Friday night. You've been working all week. Yes. Um, you you're have a hard work. You want to relax now. Let's go to happy hour and have some drinks so we can relax. Sure. Root causes. If your job's causing you that much stress, there's uh, that that's part of the issue. Yes. Um, in in a broader sense, will one drink take you off the path, the journey to spirituality? No. It will not. Um, in the broader sense, it's it, it finding what works for on the individual level to relax. Maybe maybe it's just going out from work and sitting in your car for a few minutes. Maybe not even taking it out of gear, but maybe just 
listening to music in your mm -hmm. car for 10 or 15 minutes. Play some songs that you like or or sit down and read a book or or do something that allows yourself to naturally slip away, mm -hmm. slip from what, yes. as opposed to f in, ingesting a liquid or, or having a chemical in your body that will that will push you in a direction. Mm -hmm. If you want to be more natural and more thriving, don't push levers, but practice, connect, and it's there for you in spirit. Mm -hmm. What about in the situations that we talked about, social situation? You're going out on a date. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, you're kind of nervous. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's meet for a drink. Mm-hmm. Well, that's one way to certainly, and from the social context, to mm -hmm. to take take the edge off. It's very fun. It's a it's an exciting way to just say, "Hey, let's just talk for a little bit, and let's you know, in a very informal and casual way, which is which is natural." Um, you can go out for a drink, and that drink can be water. You mm -hmm. can still have the same great experience, yes. as opposed to a martini or whatever it might be that you enjoy, mm -hmm. but. The idea being is the joy that would come from meeting from somebody for the drink should be based on the fact that it's the person you're meeting and not the drink that you're drinking. Mm -hmm. And when that's the perspective that you have, then you'll find yourself much more naturally in the same set of bliss without having to put other chemicals out, other agents into your body. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. What, it, what else did you find in his body that needs attention today? We talked about what he shouldn't be messing with. We are working with him. One idea we're, we're, we're trying to work on with him is that less focus on details and specifics um, and I would respond in this way that we are sending energy to his body now that will provide healing. Okay. We don't want him to be worried about any specific area simply because the way he will react is if we give him a specific area it may create a sense of worry that might push energies in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, is that in general, well-being is can be relatively easily enjoyed through just following the basics mm -hmm. uh, of love, care, forgiveness, cooperation. And the healing energies are available, so that takes us to allowing. And on his body specifically, there are some some areas where he, he is aware we don't want to call extra attention to that mm -hmm. but we are sending energy that will heal him and the more he's relaxed and the more that he takes time to uh, allow the more times he gives pa patience and the more that he incorporates meditation and calm into his his daily sphere the the less health problems he and others like him will experience mm -hmm. It's to be well in spirit first and then well in the body. What about diet? Yes. So we're telling him the digestion concerns that he's experienced are are our part. They were triggered. He was concerned why they were triggered and why they were happening. Mm -hmm. If you have a positive mind, why can anything happen to you? Mm -hmm. uh, that it wasn't about any anything like that it was it was about the energy is changing and in this new light everything has to it, it harmonizes if you will and there are things that he was eating and things that he was doing that were were distracting or 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 limiting his growth and we know he didn't want that he wanted he wants the growth and many 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 people do and so specifically to his diet uh, he'll be aware that anything that is inappropriate, his stomach will react very quickly. Okay. Um, and he'll he'll know. He'll know. 
He'll know. You'll give him the signal quickly. Yes. Very good. Who's working with him as far as guidance? Archangel Michael. Mm -hmm. Archangel Gabriel. And that is all that we'll share for right now. Okay. And what is the best way for him to connect with his higher self? Be near water. Either the sound of flowing water will help him with meditation. Like a fountain? Perhaps? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. um, that would be very, very helpful. Um, in a way, we, we named the two angels to give him something to visualize mm -hmm. and having that connection. That, that will facilitate a few more things that haven't been open before. Mm -hmm. um, these, these will be some immediate concerns to help with, with meditation. The idea is to relax. And why is Hunter in his life? Hmm. They've been together previously. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, and... He loves that dog. Yes, and oh. the dog loves him very much as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's, there's a connection. There was a timing for when everything took place to, to allow Ray and Hunter to reconnect. Mm -hmm. And it was important. Um, one thing that is going on now is that, for Ray specifically, is that he's, he's surrounded basically he, to a way you would have what you might even call a highlights reel of those that have been important to him in, in previous lives. Mm -hmm. And he, he's surrounded by all of them now. Mm -hmm. And that's something that he is, but should continually practice gratitude for. That's one way that'll easily allow him to open up the light. Wonderful. So would you tell me why you brought him here today? All the way from where he came yeah. from. <laughs> to get his mind off of specific outcomes and things. That coming into the session, he was expecting very precise answers to his questions. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's not what works for him. And for, for many, the expectation of something detracts from the energy of manifestation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, to get him to relax and to, to give him, if he needed it, such a concrete example, to take him off of these, these little details and to refocus him on the need for broader intentions, the intentionality is what matters. Where, what are you visualizing? What are the major themes that you're practicing as an individual? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Do you have a final message for him today? Don't worry. Be happy. Embrace every moment as it comes. Be thankful. Be loving. Be patient and be kind. Wonderful. Do you have any tips for me today? Keep going. <laughs> yeah, don't don't stop. This is just the beginning. More, much, much more is coming your way. Oh boy. Um. So be ready. But it's it's very important work. It's you're helping accelerate a process. Mm -hmm. It's an important one, and that. From the current perspective of humanity, many are 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 locked into these the need for empirical experience, and you're you're a way that's that's very a conduit that's very permissible, that's very good for bridging that gap to allow people an experience where they can see the connections that can be made mm -hmm. to bridge that gap, to make to close that divide. Um, as we're concerned with the coming changes to Earth and New Earth and what will happen in the future, it's, it's these actions of, of bridging, of making that connection, bringing more present, bringing more of what is desired into the now, into this perspective, uh, is so key. And 
a lot of these sessions. It, it does it on the individual work and through your sharing of them allows it to uh, work at both the uh, individual level as well as the um, broader level. And it, it's an important step for all the changes that are to come. So thank you for your work. Oh, thank you. I guess I signed up for this mission. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are we complete today? We are. Thank welcome you. Welcome back. Hey. How do you feel? Good. That's so? calming. Is it? Yeah. What do you remember? Uh, I think all of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was... Um, it was quite an experience. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. It, it felt like it took a little bit to get into, but then... That's how they, it... That's, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. You went exactly what you needed to, you know, yeah. where you needed to go. How do you... How long do you feel that you were on this journey? Uh, maybe about 45 minutes. Yeah. We're on an, uh, another, uh, like an hour and 20 minutes right wow. now. Wow. Okay. A lot so I guess it goes a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> Time kind of like yeah, yeah, accelerates. So, but, so is this something you want to share? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, I think it had f information for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a really great conversation yeah. that we had. <laughs> sure, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah. what do you remember? Um, uh, uh, bits and pieces. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, it was it was great. I guess it was it was mostly higher self. Low, yeah, low it was all time. of it. Yeah, it was all of it. I, uh, but um, yeah, it, it just it felt strange. It was kind of just like automatic the the, the talking and like letting it flow. There yes. was like little bits of uh, kind of me jumping in and like being a little bit more aware, but then just kind of like, yeah, I just want to let this happen. I want to let this flow. So how did you get your ego out of the way? Um, what did you do? It, it happened naturally. But the main thing that I tried to remember is the one thing that you said in the beginning was just listen to the sound of your voice. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever I felt like ego was coming in, I was like, all right, shut up. We're just going to listen to Alba. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it worked. It worked out. Were you visualizing well. anything while this was happening? Um, sure. So I was seeing like, um, okay, so when we were talking to the higher self, no, I, I just felt a, a, a sense of warmness, mm. calm, assuredness mm -hmm. um, that was much greater than, you know, what I would normally experience. Yes. Um, in the beginning, I was doing a little bit of the visualization. Like I could clearly see the, the waves crashing and like going in. And, uh, but you know, after that, it was just like, then, yeah, it was a little less clearly visualizing a little bit more, just allowing my heart. That's self wonderful. To I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff, Yeah. a lot of forgiveness, Yeah. you know, because yep. that's, these are subjects that everyone mm -hmm. uh, need, they really need to get involved with. Yeah, yeah. It, it it felt pretty pretty simple, but it was it was pretty well stated. Oh yeah, I mean, very yeah. well stated. Now, how did it feel to be in hypnosis? What would you tell everybody mm -hmm. what what it feels like? Yeah, um, it it feels. Huh. Uh, you know, you come in expecting, you have your expectations and whatever it is, you really just want to leave that at the door. Um, you just want to allow. Um, mm -hmm. And once you're going, I mean, the, the, the talking, the higher self when it was coming through, it was like automatic. <laughs> it was just like, bam, there, here are the words, go. Yes. And Were you in the background it, listening? Yeah, I, I was. And, you know, for, for a moment I was wondering, is, is this me or is this the higher self? I was like, no, it's the higher self. Just, <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was, that was definitely part of it, but it, it, it felt, um, wonderful. And as I, I was allowing, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And you as a teacher, mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked, we talked about this before we started yeah. that as a teacher, you naturally are channeling yeah. a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. That's so part of it. that's part of it. And you were pretty much told do more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Do more so, of that. Cause higher self knows a little bit more so <laughs> take advantage of it yeah. so you can connect with knowledge you yeah. have to give and then connect yeah. the higher self in there exactly perfect so yeah. what do you tell everybody to about this session should they do this um i would certainly recommend it, it it's um it, it's very good uh, you know a way to answer i feel a little bit more connected I, mm -hmm. I definitely feel like a certain sense of like warmth and connection that yeah. um you know i i it would be much harder for me to get to on my own if I could at all, mm -hmm. which yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, if you would like to book a session with me, go to my website, albaweinman.com. Uh, I book way 
far away. Yeah. <laughs> How many months so, did you have to um, wait? So I booked in six months in advance. Six months. Yeah. And they're even farther now. Yeah. But I do travel all over the place. Uh, so if you would like a session with me, you can go to my out of town page on my website. And from there, you can sign up for my newsletter to tell you where I'll be going to next. And where did you come from? New Jersey. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. My home state. Yes. <laughs> Worth the trip. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching and I hope I get to see you sometime soon in one of my sessions. Bye. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, get that home. Oh.